We're here to solve this cave by Michael Tang called A Tale of Two Cities, and it's a pretty tricky cave as these go. Um, I'm going to start with a rule, I guess, or showing a rule I use a lot in these cave puzzles, and it's called a avoid a checkerboard rule. Um, in some cases, for instance, a two that's diagonal next to another clue is a pattern many people get used to. If I've marked this in white, then I would have to mark these as shaded cells. And the reason a checkerboard is a bad pattern is you can't you can at the same time obey two of the rule constraints. In this case, if this cell gets somehow to an edge of the grid as an outside part of the cave, these green cells will be separated from each other. And that's however this joins to an edge. For this to join to an edge, it's going to sort of wrap to some edge and separate these. Different way to see that is if these greens do get together, like however they go, if it's near or super, super far, um, they've effectively encompassed the cell. So topologically, you can't form a checkerboard in the grid and have a valid cave work out. So where a common place to see that pattern is with this two and this three, and say mark a cell like this as a diagonal option, this puzzle is going to have a few cases, I think, where it's going to pop out in a different way. And the first one I'm a little bit used to, but I, I think is going to be a hard pattern for many, is to see this three has a similar constraint right with the cell. If the cell is inside the cave, then these two get marked out, and we again have a situation where we're going to be getting a checkerboard pattern and an invalid state of the grid. And so the start that I see in this puzzle actually marking this cell outside of the cave using an extended checkerboard rule from this three into this four, that now isolates this six with a total of seven cells around it, but these cells always need to be used, and then one of these remaining three is not used. Having marked this in, this cell now is another case where we would form a checkerboard if it got shaded, so this is marked off. That now around two shaded and one unshaded means this must be shaded. That finishes the six, puts this in. To avoid a checkerboard, this is white, and also to avoid a checkerboard, this is white. That finishes the three and finish the two, and this has to be shaded to avoid a checkerboard there. This four is now forming most of a checkerboard pattern, so this has to be white. These, to complete the four clue, are marked in. This five has two cells. This could be three, four, five over to here, so that's always required. This outside the loop piece has to get to an edge of the grid, so it's got to come through a channel like this to work. That means this three is okay coming up. Um, this seven has currently five, six, seven. To here, it could go further out, but we still have this end that's got to get to an edge of the grid, so it's got to take one more cell. This eight has seven here, and can take only three in this direction, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And marking this, that's all forced based off the count around the eight. This end still has to get over to here, and now as we've marked all this in, we've now constrained another edge clue. This seven could only take five in the column because it can't connect to this two. But with five in the column and two more in the row, it just has enough space now to go, so we mark that in. That puts in this four, and just to sort of make some help in the notations I tend to use, these are limits around the four clue. I'll mark this shaded cell and then put these limits around the two clue. So one of these cells, at least, has to be shaded. And a useful thing is you make that notation, this is another place the checkerboard pattern will rear its head, is when you have an either-or shading that's touching to an X, you actually always have to have the shaded cell of an X also be shaded. So if this were unshaded, form a checkerboard. So this is in, this is in. We don't know anything about the other cell. This is valid, this is valid. But the one thing that's not valid is having this pattern where the X uh, near two sure cells would form a checkerboard. So we get uh, this into the grid. Checkerboard rule gets this cell shaded. Um, we got this marked up. We got uh, this marked over, so the three can't come all the way here. Here's another on off with an X nearby it. And again, remember that means that this has to be shaded. So this five, this two comes down, this gets marked in, this comes across. There's something a little subtle here. What is it? So this five now has a remaining count of two and it's diagonal to seven. So it always wants to take this cell or this cell which means that this cell as a starting point is bad. Why? It's going to form a checkerboard right away. So we start by marking this cell off. In doing that, we actually see this three can't grow out in just one direction. It has to grow in both directions to get to a total of three with a valid pattern. This is for a checkerboard rule. This comes up here. Um, this cave end still has to escape to an outside of the grid. So that marks these in. That puts this in. This is to get a valid count. This gets out to the grid like so. This is to avoid checkerboard, checkerboard. This is five, can't take to six, so this comes to here. This for connection comes up. We've got six, but not seven, eight, so this is seven. This gets outside to the grid. 
the seven can see five, six, seven, this four has to take it over to here, this to avoid a checkerboard, this eight always has to see this cell so we can mark the rest off. So pretty hard cave, but if you used to both the checkerboard pattern and then these X notations near checkerboard patterns, you could hopefully work through some of the sticking points for seeing the influence on the six, getting to where you had influence on the seven, and then avoiding checkerboards around this, this cluster, this two, three, four, five cluster to get to the finish of this puzzle. So hope you learned something through this video and we'll see you again soon.